Welcome, John. Are you there? Okay, his his logo is in front of us. He's connecting the audio. He says. Um, okay, I'm to do that. And you were you were actually doing a, an excellent job about about talking about how the tradition of Islam prepares us for the challenges of the of the uh, COVID nineteen uh, virus. Uh, please explain the, the point. Yes. So the reason why I say that for the new Muslim, if this is their first Ramadan mm -hmm. uh, fasting, uh, Ramadan prepares you for instances uh, like this. Mm -hmm. However, for those who have fast and fast often, uh, Ramadan has prepared us for, for these particular moments. However, mm -hmm. what you're missing is the community peace. Ramadan is a month of intense reflection mm -hmm. on the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. but also focusing in on oneself. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the tradition of uh, the Rasulullah, that when the revelation came down, he was in seclusion, mm -hmm. Mount Hira, yes. reflecting. And Allah Ta'ala gave him the Qur'an and sent down the Qur'an to him. So therefore, uh, facing this pan pandemic when many of us are away from uh, the community and we're in our rooms or in our private spaces mm -hmm. studying and reading and reflecting on the oh, Word of Allah, are. it prepares us for this particular moment. Okay. However, what we're missing is going out into the community and doing the work. Oh, this is this is great information. John John just joined us, and, uh, and uh, he just popped in. I, he's got two cameras working at the same time. That would be John. Uh, <laughs> John, John That's our good brother. <laughs> your, your, is your audio on, John? My audio is on. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear. Okay, okay, got you. you got you're using two cameras to do that. All right, got you. No, one is audio. One is uh, one is video. I wish you. I got you. I, I can see you're, you're a technological genius. No. <laughs> um, I just wanted to just uh, follow up on, on a comment that, um, that my dear brother made. Matter of fact, he, he's here. He can just give the comment again. And then, uh, John, if you were to respond to him, we're talking about self-restraint and what it teaches us, right? And, and uh, perhaps you can give a, a, a further comment on, on the brother uh, Idris's uh, statement. Go ahead, Brother Jesus. Yeah, so, further elaborate. So, first of all, I would like to give the greetings to you, Brother Khalil, and uh, Imam John. Salam alaikum. And uh, so, Imam John. So, what I was 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 reflecting on was uh, the, the question. The question was, how does Ramadan prepare us for moments that we're facing uh, the COVID nineteen the COVID nineteen crisis? Mm -hmm. And my answer was that for the new for the new Muslim. Uh, Ramadan will prepare you for that for these particular this particular moment. However, for those who have have fasted for some time, Ramadan has has prepared us for it because it is a month of intense uh, intense reflection. And when we look at the tradition of the Prophet, he was at uh, he was at the mount uh, when the revelation came down. Of course. Reflecting, he was by he was by himself. But what we're missing, and what and and, and what uh, we're facing with the COVID nineteen crisis is it limits us after we reflect to then go out into the community to do the work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. John, what do you think? What do you think about self restraint and and what it teaches you? Well, I thought that was an excellent answer. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, but uh, self-restraint has everything to do with inner strength, which is what Ramadan is uh, is best able to uh, offer the human person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in order to do anything with our physical body, we have to bring our inner being to bear on it, whether it be your intelli intellect mm -hmm. or your perception or... Um, or just common sense. I mean, sense. and all of these things tend to work better after Ramadan or as as we execute Ramadan because yeah. we are 
we are unplugging from the world, as it were. Um, we're, uh, as uh, the Imam said, it's an intense uh, exercise, uh, uh, devotional exercise, mm -hmm. which takes us from the outer world and it and it concentrates us on the inner life. And as such, we think clearer, we reason better, we uh, we love stronger and harder. Um, we're more sensitive to each other. Um, not only not only do we love ourselves more because we're living here and in the heart, yes. uh, but we're we're loving our family members and our community members, and so it does make us very sensitive. Yes. Uh, so very nice. That's it's fascinating uh, response, John. Here's a here's a Quranic verse. It it starts at uh, El Bakr uh, one one. 183. Uh, it says that, O ye who believe, fasting is prescribed to you as uh, it was prescribed to those before you, that you may learn self-restraint. That's, that is the purpose, isn't it? Uh, to, to teach, to, to, to have this incredible educational process. And I've always loved, loved Ramadan because it, it takes you through the Quran. You know, I, I just, I, I, so you have this intimate That's relationship right. with the creator itself, you know, uh, which is which you don't always get if you if you're just so busy going after money and and trying to take care of family it's very difficult to take out take out the concentrated time to read the word of God you know <laughs> the most important mm -hmm. document in our life mm -hmm. so it, it does uh, talk about this opportunity to learn um, uh, to to um, to learn self restraint what do you think about that that idea. Um, that it, it addresses the believer directly. And it's another thing it doesn't do, it doesn't direct, it doesn't say, oh ye Muslim, you know? It says, oh ye believer, oh ye who believe, fasting is prescribed for you, as it was prescribed to people before you, um, to those, you know, to, to those that came before you, that you may learn self-restraint. So this is kind of a, a universal principle, isn't it? Uh, the idea yes. of self-restraint. Uh, what, what do you think uh, you would say to, uh, uh, to uh, to Jews and and Muslims in this regard, because they are, they also have days that they are fasting. What's the, what's the principle involved? I I'll, I'll go with Idris. Well, the top of the page here. Well, well, well. In that particular verse, it speaks about uh, fasting for the Muslim uh, is or, or when you relate it to those of different faith traditions. Yeah. Uh, it's nothing new for them. Yeah. Because the verse states that fasting was prescribed for prescribed for you talking to the Muslims as it was prescribed for, for those before you. Yeah. So there's a relation, there's a kin, kinship there. Yeah. But then also when we study the tradition of, um, of the prophet prior to fasting being prescribed in the month of Ramadan, yeah. Muslims fast with the Jews. Yeah. So there, there is a relationship. There is, there is a kinship there. But here's an important, important piece, uh, brother Khalil. It, it states that fasting is prescribed for you so that you can learn self-restraint. Yes. And I think that it's important for your 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 listeners to to know that Ramadan is a lot about, even though we're studying and reading the word of Allah intensely, yeah. Yeah. that inherently is, we should be learning a lot about ourselves. Yeah. Ramadan is a, a lot about self-discovery. Yeah. And we should come out of the month of Ramadan as new people. That's an interesting idea. I like the idea. What do you think, John? Again, a superior answer. Yeah, superior mind. Um, I love that. Um, I think of uh, Ramadan as uh, taking me back to my best self. Yes. Um, and uh, where where others are concerned, who who may not consider themselves uh, Muslims, mm -hmm. but who are indeed Muslims, if they yes. follow the if they follow the uh, the natural law, mm -hmm. and I say all oh, the peace is what how I refer to Islam is as the laws of peace if they follow the laws of peace whatever that way is um, fasting is prescribed meaning that your universal self is really beyond this body that we have 
the universal self uh, touches all spheres of creation. And if you let your mind go, which happens during Ramadan, uh, you can find those places that Allah guides you to. And if you're, and if you're attuned, if you're attuned, you will see what Allah wants you to see. And this is our way beyond this body. Um, and so what I would say to others who, whether you're Christian, Muslim, Jew, uh, atheist, whatever you are, yeah. if you uh, indeed want something good for yourself or you want something good for your family, fasting is a way to go. Fasting is a way for you to detach from this physical realm mm -hmm. and to see other things. So we fast during the daylight hours, which is symbolic of the life, the, 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 the life of this world. The daylight hours is symbolic of the life of this world. Mm -hmm. And the night is symbolic of your eventual death. So, mm -hmm. so we eat during the nighttime because we're in the ground. You know, we're part of the creation in, a, in and of itself. So mm -hmm. these things are the, the wave upon wave of, of uh, Ramadan and really what it means to be a Muslim and really what it means to fast and to, uh, and to, and to elevate. And as, as I said, I, I, I'm better at loving. I'm better at thinking. I'm better at even grieving if I have to. Yes. Uh, and of course, I'm better at eating. <laughs> the food is oh so good. <laughs> I agree with you, particularly, particularly at the Eid festivals. I think uh, it says the Quran verse goes on to say that fasting uh, for a fixed period of, uh, of days, a, a, a fixed number of days. Don't you think that's an act of of, um, of uh, compassion? from the creator to, to the believer that, that this is not an activity that goes on forever and ever and ever, mm -hmm. amen, that it is, you know, 30 days and it is from dawn to dusk. Uh, you, do you think that that is an act of, of compassion? John, I'll come back to you. Um, absolutely, uh, it definitely is compassion. Um, we don't want to fast forever. Right, right. Um, you want to be uh, forever. I think, I think, um, <laughs> Almighty God does, uh, he, we, we have great dignity in the fast and yeah. that is on us. Yes. Um, we, we, you know, we can't tiptoe around, you know, um, looking at others and what they're doing yes. because a lot of the fast is for him. I mean, we fast for Allah solely uh, from our own nafs and from our own heart. And that intent is, is, is part of what drives a fast. And yes. even though, there are situations in the fast where you can't really stop eating. Yeah. If you have a medical condition or whatever, what, what, what is important is that it comes from the heart and that Allah accepts it from you. And so that's the thing that's important, I think. Um, um, I, I agree with that. And, and it goes on to extend more compassion uh, if you're on a journey that you can actually uh, uh, shorten, shorten your, your fast and make it up, make it up days later. Uh, which, which I think is fantastic. And then there's some other, other um, uh, I don't, uh, not get out of jail card free statements, but it's just kind of a, uh, it's kind of a, an alternative to the, to the fast itself. Like if, if you're not able to fast then you can actually feed the, the indigent, the, the, the person who is hungry, a person who is in bad state or a homeless person. Uh, what, what do you think about that, uh, Idris? Is, is that, Along your thinking, that 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 is that is uh, Almighty God's mercy yeah. upon us. He says that He does not want to uh, put any type of difficulty yes, yes. Uh, on us. He desires yeah. ease, ease for us, and, and and that and that's the beauty of it. This month, yes, this month is more than about what we eat yeah. or what we drink. When yeah. we think about the fast, it's, it's, it's much bigger than that. And you just brought something, uh, brought something up in reference to what about those individuals who have health conditions where they, they cannot fast. That's right. That's right. Allah says that what you have to do then is feed someone else. And think about the beauty of that. Mm -hmm. It's to feed someone else who do, who do not have and I, I think the Arabic word for that is is, is called the fidya, the fidya tomb. I mm -hmm. think is the, the word that Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala uses uh, in the Quran. Mm -hmm. So again, it's all a part of Allah's mercy extended 
uh, to, to, to us during this month, to find out so much more about ourselves and extend ourselves to others. Yes, and, and it goes on to say, to, to follow what we just said, um, but he that will do more of his own free will, it is better for him. So if you actually do more than just feed one or two people or maybe feed a neighborhood or something, mm -hmm. it is better for you if you, if you did that. Uh, and it is better for you that ye fast. It still returns you back to your obligation before law that is better for you right. to fast uh, and right. than to do any of those things. Um, if you only knew, and, and they're, they're pointing to the point that you have to be knowledgeable about what you're doing. <laughs> so so the, the Ramadan, the, the Ramadan is mentioned again here in the Quran uh, at the uh, Baqarah 185. It talks about Ramadan is a month in which uh, was sent down the Quran. Um, tell me what you, what, you, what you think about this idea of celebrating um, the birth of a of a revelation. I mean, uh, how does that how does that how does that work in your imagination? Tell me. Yeah. So uh, so uh, the Quran. If you want to compare the Quran to anything, uh, the only way to do it is say the creation itself. Yeah. So the Quran is an is the exegesis of the creation itself. Yeah. And so when when we're celebrating the Quran, we're celebrating the mercy and blessing of Allah. We're, we're celebrating it while we're living in these bodies uh, with an aim that we're going to return to that universe one day. Mm -hmm. um, and every step that a Muslim takes, every breath we take, every halal thing that we do um, is in preparation for the day of standing. We say Yom Kiyama, the day of standing, the day that we uh, are erect before our Lord and we have to answer for what we've done. And so uh, the, the the fast is one of many of the principles uh, that 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 uh, make uh, a Muslim's life so uh, so interesting because it permits us to have leverage over uh, the misdeeds and the incorrect things, the er the errors that we do. And so uh, to say that you can feed the hungry, uh, which may not be equal to fast the actual fast. Yes. But to say that you can feed the hungry, that's just another way of leveraging um, your good deeds against those things that you've done in error. And if everyone has that idea, yes. uh, much like the, with this COVID-19, if everyone if everyone protects themselves, yes. are wearing a mask by social distancing, yes. all of us will benefit. And oh so this God. is a way that, yeah. Yes. Well, it, it goes on to talk about, I mean, just the, the opening statement was Ramadan is the month uh, in, uh, in which uh, was sent down the Quran as a guide to mankind, also clear signs for guidance and judgments between right and wrong. Um, this is truly an educational process, isn't it, uh, Brother Idris? Yes, I mean, it is. Um, again, all throughout the Quran, a lot uh, lays out to us mm -hmm. what's right and what's wrong. Yes. What's good for us, what's harmful for us. Yes. And if we continue to study what he has sent down to us, it, it is a, a, a book that keeps us on that path that leads to him. Ah. And when we are on that path that leads to him, those things are pleasing to him. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Brother John, further comment? So the Quran, um, uh, we, we think the, the Quran is a literal um, words from Allah. The, mm -hmm. the message uh, is a condensed message. It's basically taken all of the guidance that human, the human family has been given Yes. In the uh, scriptural legacy of the human being yes. and condensing it into one place, which would you would you would think that that would be if, the, if, you, if you were if, if you were to think of the master of the universe, the master of the universe would send you one clear message in one clear book. Um, and so that's what uh, the, the Quran represents. And uh, we know. Uh, we say Laetul Qadr, the night of power, is better than a thousand months. 
which is better than a whole lifetime. So in the Quran, we're, we're told that this month is a very special month. And then that one night of that month is better than a whole lifetime of studying, uh, better than a whole lifetime of, mm -hmm. of worship. Mm -hmm. um, if you hit the, if you got the right night, and if you are sincere and devoted in your worship. So the Quran, the words in the Quran are literal, uh, the literal verbatim message from Allah. And although it, and although it is, it's still bound for interpretation. Every single person who reads the Quran is not yeah. going to read it exactly the same. Yeah. So, well, I don't, is that is that is that a good is that is that a good thing or a bad thing, John? Of course, it's good. What it says is that Allah has made the human being uh, in this fascinating way, yeah. where we all came from one flesh. We all are one flesh. Yeah. We all are one flesh. And, you, and, and Allah reserves a right to allow us to per, and permit us to think differently from each other. But, but as long as we return to that one theme, we say uh, uh, ahad, one, the oneness, the tawheed of, uh, of uh, Islam. Alhamdulillah. Um, Brother Khalil. Yes, go right here, Adrian. Um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, um, to add a little something to what Imam John just stated um, in reference to um, that also the verses in Quran can also resonate to each one of us differently, right. depending upon our circumstances. That's right. That's right. Time in life, because yeah. what 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 one may read today, they can read it five years from now. That same verse, oh and it resonates different, and it resonates differently. Yeah, so again, <laughs> yeah. So again, again, it's about really a deep discovery into oneself. Yeah. Yes. You know, the, the Quran goes on to talk about that Allah doesn't want any difficulty for someone doing this process. It says, Allah says in the Quran, that says, Allah intends every facility for, for you. He does not want to put you to difficulties. He wants you to complete the period prescribed uh, and to glorify him in that he has guided you and perchance that ye may be grateful. Powerful word. Um, here, here is this uh, this process of di a discipline that we are to learn from and and to appreciate uh, Allah in greater terms and more meaningful terms, and uh, and also to to be grateful uh, to Allah uh, for for providing the Quran itself. <laughs> so, so it's really kind of interesting how it, it, it really focus you, focus you to the revelation that uh, the gift that God has given us, you know, and which is probably not just the text itself, but everything, right? Everything in life. Yeah. Um, right. So to be grateful to Allah, is, is that something that is um, a, an idea that's, that is uh, universal in, in the religion itself? Is, do you think that, that uh, to do mo almost anything as a Muslim is to be grateful to God, uh, Idris? I, I think that that should be that should be the approach. Yeah. I don't think that that's always the uh, our human response. Yeah. But uh, a lot of stakes in court, and uh, after the difficulty comes, comes uh, the relief ease. or or the yeah. ease, and then when we sit back and reflect upon past circumstances that have happened in our lives, where we deemed it or perceived it to be a negative response. Oh, geez. Have time to sit back, whether it be a grieving period. Mm -hmm. We then sometimes can pull out something that was beneficial that we learned about someone else or about ourselves. Yeah. So um, that's that's just the beauty that we should be grateful for every moment. But that mm -hmm. comes with this. But that comes with this discipline that we are trying and struggling to achieve during the month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, that's the, my mother's middle name is Shukriya, which is the, the thankfulness or the, or the, uh, um, this, this idea that, that of really is worship, yeah. you know, uh, gratefulness is worship in and of itself. And if you think about it, gratefulness is really a resonance. Yes. A human, it's a resonance within your soul. And that gratefulness, you might think, that that gratefulness, that that resonance, whatever it is, yes. here long before we came here, 
Alhamdulillah. When we, and when we and when we go through this Ramadan fast and we're going inward, yes. we're finding those strings yes. and we're plucking those strings by using the the tools of this uh, this uh, Islamic discipline yes. to go in and um, and to and to refine the those feelings that that are precious. Um, when we when we sin, when we go against nature. What we do is we 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 foul that fine instrument that we have inside, and Ramadan mm -hmm. is a way to leverage ourselves once a year and purge ourselves of the most heinous things that we've done for that year, and remembering that we're already praying five times a day, yes, uh, at least five times a day. Mm -hmm. We're already doing the fasting. We're already doing the charity. We're already doing all of these things. Again, are levers. Yeah. So that we can uh, uh, elevate ourselves to a point where we, when we, when we do finally pass away, which we all will, yeah. that we will leave these bodies without regret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. This book, this book is quite amazing when it actually goes further to, uh, to give us a, a, even a more merciful opportunity. A lot of uh, spiritual disciplines lock you away in, in caves and, and, uh, or go to a, um, a far place uh, in a desert and stay away from everything and everybody. Uh, this, uh, this discipline doesn't do that, does it? It, it sets limits. It's, you know, it's dawn to dust uh, for 30 days. And, and you're actually able to, as it says here, permit it to you on the night of the fast, on the night of the fast, is the approach to your wives. They are a garment for you, as ye are a garment for them. Allah knows what you have done in, in secret in your private life. Okay. Uh, which it, which is um which is an act of knowing the human being. You know, the human being has has these needs and and they are ones that are uh, irrational. This is a rational way to approach this discipline. And, and I thought that was I thought that was very, very uh um, soothing for me that you're not locked away in a cave somewhere. <laughs> that you you're able to have family life, you know, uh, and 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 still learn what Allah intends for you to learn. Um, I found it interesting too. Uh, and the following verse, I'm going to skip over some of the some of this verse because because this particular area actually deals with uh, Ramadan pretty pretty succinctly. After you read this, you know how to do Ramadan. It's almost mm -hmm. almost incredibly. Uh, 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 restricted to, to Ramadan. It says here that, and, and do not eat up your property among yourselves in vanity, nor use it to bait for a judge uh, with the intent that ye may uh, eat up wrongfully, unknowingly, a little of someone else's property. Uh, I think that that is a, a, also another wonderful notion of self-restraint uh, to be able to um, to contemplate justice uh, and mm -hmm. and to use your property in ways that uh, that are not are going to lead people to swerve from justice, you know, I, I think that's uh, that is a marvelous verse of, from the from the from the crime. Tell me, what what are your thoughts, Greece? Absolutely. Well, um, again, the Quran is just a beautiful instruction for humankind yeah um for those who read arabic in a verse you use for those who eat up others property yeah and it's amazing that in the arabic it uses the same root for akala mm -hmm. or to eat mm -hmm. so but it's not speaking about eating food and drink right it's saying restraining for doing harmful things again mm -hmm. to others Mm. doing things that you know that's not right for a good cause mm. for you, which that was in the tradition. And that's what Allah was, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala was addressed in that particular ayah. Okay. So again, wow. Allah, Allah brings these things together uh, uh, for us. And this is why it's extremely important for us to, to this particular month because as Imam John mentioned when you start plucking at those strings yes. these are those intricate details that we can then start to put together to say oh mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I see how this works with my life now. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That's, that's right. I have to do a lot. That's exactly right. Brother John? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I know that, um, you know, we have the idea that Allah says that marriage is half your religion. Yes. And so I was thinking one day um, uh, about that. And um, I said to myself, I said, well, what's the other half? <laughs> and okay. I came up with I came up with the idea of divorce. Mm -hmm. so if, marriage <laughs> one, if marriage is one half of your religion, then divorce might be the other half. Maybe the other half. <laughs> and, 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 and I thought maybe that was just a kind of funny way to say it. But when I thought about it, it's kind of true because, you know, if the world is separated in good and evil, you want to stay away from the evil and yeah. you want to only accept what's good. So the marriage is between you and every right thing that's in the universe. And the divorce is the, 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 the ability for you to have the discipline to stay, afraid, to stay away from every evil and incorrect and unclean thing. Yes. that's in the universe and so it balances when you think about it yes yes mm -hmm. alhamdulillah brother john this might lead right into your to your to uh to that notion of uh of uh, discomfort that, that divorce brings but uh I'll, I'll leave it up to your to your assessment uh it, it says here um and it's one of the very few times that it's mentioned throughout the quran fighting is in the cause of allah uh those who fight you but do not transgress limits. For well, Allah loves not transgressors. <laughs> Adrian, what do you think? Well, uh, yeah, there's there's no extremes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's no extremes here. Yeah, again, uh, Allah wants balance for us. Right. Balance. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's it. All brings back to the middle path. When we started with, with, with today's reading, starting with our background, uh, 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 Surah 2, 180, 183, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, was speaking about not putting difficulty mm -hmm. on anyone. Yeah. You know, things that we can do if we, if we cannot fast. Yeah. So that's the beauty of this religion. Yes, yes, I, I quite agree. Uh, John, comment? And uh, when you were th when you were talking about that, I was thinking about the uh, Tai Chi. Uh -huh. You know, Tai Chi is two forces, right? Right. And um, when someone attacks you, as a Muslim, you're supposed to thwart the attack. Uh -huh. You're supposed to neutralize the attack. What is the purpose of neutralizing the attack? Mm -hmm. It's to do what the whole universe is doing and bring thing and bring the thing into equilibrium. So that. once it's brought into equilibrium, you can't apply more force to it, or else you have the same situation. So yeah. the Muslim is always about what? Peace. That's what Islam is called. Islam from mm -hmm. Salama to peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and Muslim is the person who, who, who is about peace. And so peace is our creed. Peace is what we are about. Ramadan is ultimately all about uh, the origina originating peace and the destination peace. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and Brother Khalil, and I was just gonna gonna add this, and this is not mine. This belongs to um, the person who just spoke, Imam John. I got this from him, which uh -huh. he, he, he stated that the word Muslim in and of itself is an action verb. So uh, a Muslim is a person who is, is in the constant act of striving for peace. Once your intent leaves that, mm. that kind of takes you out of the fold of Islam. So yeah. we as Muslims should always be striving for peace, even in those stressful moments yeah. Yeah. In, 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 in life. But again, that's not yeah. mine. That's Imam John's. I just I, stated I it because it. he I, just did. Well, I have a whole, a whole, a whole notebook here. So I, I, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I, I wanted to give you an opportunity to, to make calls and remarks and perhaps giving a young person or a person who's new to Islam uh, an opportunity to feel good about maybe their first fast or their second fast. Uh, mm -hmm. let's, let's give them some encouraging words. 
on, on how they should uh, approach tomorrow, <laughs> which is the start of the fast for me. Uh, so if you, if, you, if you would, what are some of the things that a person should uh, appreciate uh, going into uh, the month of Ramadan? Beatrice? Um, I would first say that to take it slow, I personally believe that Ram uh, fasting during the, the blessed month of Ramadan is easier than any time that we decide to fast. Um, Allah says that this fast is for him. So therefore, when we are striving for his cause, things, when you, when you that's what our intent is, um, it's a lot easier. But when we're just fasting mm -hmm. for us, it's more mm -hmm. difficult. But I would tell the person who is beginning their fast tomorrow, <laughs> do not put too much pressure on yourself. Um, if they're, Approach your fast, and if there's there's a time where you may have to break your fast, depending upon the situation, yeah. Allah knows our intent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Allah knows our intent. Mm -hmm. If you fast for five hours to tomorrow and can't make it to seven, try try to make it to seven on day 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 two, and inshallah, God willing you will be able to fast before the end of Ramadan. You will be able to fast the entire month. Inshallah. Mm -hmm. Brother John? Alhamdulillah. Um, so I'm blessed that I have been fasting now for 41 years. Mm -hmm. um, I was a young, young Marine in the United, United States Marine Corps in uh, Okinawa, Japan, when I first started. And I still think of fast mm -hmm. as my best fast because I was invigorated, I was so uh, full of, uh, of the new, the new um, idea about Islam and what it meant to me. So I went full tilt and um, I was already in a disciplined environment. So, um, but what I have come to realize is that as I get older, um, you know, it, it gets to be a deeper um, and more personal fast. And that's what I would express to a young person coming in is never lose touch of your feelings in the fast. The, the feelings are everything because really, I mean, think about it, you know, your identity, who you are and how you feel is everything about who you are. Yeah. And the fast is meant to bring out who you are. And as a hadith that says, to know Allah is to know yourself. That's right. And this is ultimately what you're trying to do. You're trying to discover the limits of your mind, the limits of your body, and you're using these tools that Islam gives you or Islam gives you in order to arrive at that. And so with that being the aim, um, you know, like Imam Idris said, don't hurt yourself. That's not the object. The object is not for you to hurt yourself. The object is, you, uh, is for you to discover yourself. And in the, in the fact that you discover yourself, you will discover that the almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth is inside of you. Yeah. Yeah. He's always, Allah has always been there. But when you fast, you come closer to that. You dream deeper. You'll love deeper. You'll think deeper. You'll be deeper. Yes, yes. I, agree. I, I absolutely agree. I think that uh, you return me back to the quest for knowledge uh, because I think that self-restraint actually uh, assists you in, in acquiring knowledge. And uh, so it's, it's a very important process. I, I, um, I remember uh, having once... Uh, the the in in college trying to solve a math math problem algebra problem and uh, it was pretty tricky <laughs> and uh, actually it took me about five five times to try to try to try to solve the problem but each time I went to the problem and I would get it wrong I would step away from the problem walk down through the library and say to myself that Allah didn't create this uh, tricky universe you know <laughs> there there is answers to be had out here and he gave me the intellectual okay. tools. To discover it, and uh, so that is kind of a um, a self restraint, isn't it? You don't you don't uh, yeah. go against a problem and say, "Ouch!" You know, it's, it's really painful. So let me just give up. You know, you have to return back to your your concept of the divine and say, "Well, you know, universe is not a tricky place. It's actually a place that opens up to you." And and if you just consistently strive for it, you will develop the disciplines necessary to solve the answer. And uh, it was really kind of an amazing time for me, but I'm glad. But each time I, w I went away from the problem, I, I just kept reciting that God doesn't make a foolish universe. It is, it is consistent. I, I think this was 
also the comment of one of the, I, I want to say, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, yeah, or, or uh, no, 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 it was Einstein, that God doesn't make uh, a, a, a universe that is foolish, you know? Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. last this last verse is is uh, is the one that we started with. It's O ye who believe, fasting is prescribed to you as it was uh, prescribed to those before you, that you may learn self restraint. That's what we've been talking about all evening, gentlemen. And we have actually been talking for forty five minutes. So I'm going to oh, give. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, like <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to record. I have recorded this, and I'm going to upload it. <clears throat> And send you each a copy, okay, inshallah. Okay. And uh, we'll upload sure. it on, online and YouTube and everywhere if it's okay with you all. Thank you very Thank much. You. And may Allah bless you both, you, both of you. And uh, have a great day. May, may Allah bless your work as well. It's an important work. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. you, I appreciate that very much. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Ramadan Kareem.